In this segment, we're going to concentrate on noise reduction and output sharpening. And you'll see why I'd like to group these two steps together. We're going to do this all on one layer, and I don't want these two layers to be part of it, so I'm going to turn these off, and I'm going to bring all this into one layer from here up. Just flatten it into one layer, but keep our component layers. So I'm going to merge visible, control, alt, shift, E. Now I can turn these back on. And I'll lock its position. And I'm going to name this noise reduction and output sharpening or something like that, just to keep track of it. Now, as you might recall, in Camera Raw, we kept the sharpening turned off, and we were delaying this towards the end of the workflow. We're almost done with this image, but we want to smooth it out a little bit, and this works particularly well on portraits. I'm going to go to Filter, Noise, Reduce Noise. You've got the preview area here, so if your computer's a little slow, you can turn off the preview, and it will only update the visible area you see. Now, the way these sliders work basically is I'm going to crank up the strength all the way initially just so you can see what you've got. You can see that this is like a Gaussian blur with a threshold and that's this preserved details that causes the blur to only happen in the areas you specify maintaining detail along the edges and how much detail you wish to maintain is contained here. As a rule of thumb a setting of about 25 will work fairly nicely. Let's zoom in here. Now with all this hair and fur on the dogs here. I'm probably going to bring it up. You can see how it keeps the detail here and smooths this. Let me bump it up a little bit more. For portraits, though, I'd recommend about 25. Let's see. It's looking pretty good. See how it keeps the edges? All right. Maybe a little more on the details in. Let's click OK. And now I'm going to apply the sharpening directly to this layer. The idea being we're going to sharpen everything that's left over. This way I'm not sharpening any noise artifacts or anything like that. I'm only sharpening what got through the filter of our noise reduction. So that works real well for portraits when you want to maintain a nice skin tone. Let's go filter sharpen and now we're going to choose smart sharpen. The Smart Sharpen is a relative newcomer to Photoshop. It's been around the last uh, last few generations. And it's just like a sharpen with a brain. You can go to this Advanced tab, however, the way we use it here, we're not going to need it. We'll just stay on Basic. We'll crank up the amount all the way so you can see what we've got here. And we're going to drop the radius quite a bit. In fact, we'll take it to like 0, 0 0.3, something like that. See how it's Look at 0 0.2 is about the smallest Photoshop will even register. And that's that's actually sharpening pretty well. You can see. Let's look at some of this lattice where at 100 percent this chair, some of these areas probably will show better. They weren't that in that good a focus to begin with. Let's see. See how the smart sharpening is hitting just the edges, but it's ignoring gradients, so any noise artifacts or whatever will only be minimized. That's why I don't like to run it before now. I like to do the noise reduction and then only sharpen what's left over. This is a paradox I've discovered. When you're at this low of a radius, you actually will get better results than if you have this more accurate turned on. See, it starts hitting areas you don't want, so... I'm going to leave it. These are the settings I'm going to go with. In general, go with a very low radius and a high amount. And you'll need a high amount like that because it's so subtle when you're running a radius like that. And I'll click OK. By the way, just as an aside, since we have a little time left in this segment, if you want to understand exactly what's happening with sharpening, you can prove it for yourself by taking a layer. I'll just sharpen this existing layer and just I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to, this is just for a demo, so I'm going to delete this in a second anyway, but I'm going to desaturate the layer, and then run the high pass filter. It's under Filter, Other, High Pass. 
And when this comes up, it's all based on the radius. See what you see here? If at a high radius, we see the whole image. The bigger the radius gets, the softer things get. But at a low radius, it's the amount of detail. See? 4.5. Let's zoom in on the image a little bit. We're at 200% now. All right. Let's go back to close to like 0 0.2, which is what we did with the smart sharpening. I don't even know if you'll be able to see it. Let's try 0 0.3. That's about the most I think it's even going to show up. I'll move it a little more so you can see it, like 0 0.5. But see, at these real slight settings, it's only hitting the edges. Now, the base of this is 50% gray. Imagine if we were to set the blending mode of this to overlay. Everything darker than 50% gray would burn, and everything lighter than dodge. And that would produce the same effect as the sharpening. It just accentuates and punches these areas where you have edges. Let's look somewhere else where you expect to find some. Like, see the chair here? It ignores the middle part just at the juncture where you have contrast. That's where it burns the darker areas and dodges the lighter, and that's essentially what sharpening is. I'll cancel this and delete the layer. In the next segment, we're going to actually add some of the noise back that was removed in our noise reduction.